Greetings Aqua fam, it is Ben Aqua. This is a requested video where I'm gonna compare JPEGs taken on the G85 and the G9 from Panasonic. I took several pictures with the same exact settings on both cameras using the Panasonic Leica 25 millimeter f1.4 lens. I also shot all these photos using higher ISOs just to check out how the cameras render these JPEGs out and to see which one maybe does a better job, which one kind of sucks. So let's go into the samples and check out the differences. On the left, we have the Panasonic G9 and on the right, we have the Panasonic G85. So all these samples are all JPEGs straight out of the camera. I didn't do any post-processing on any of these. So one thing I'm noticing about this photo already is that there's this area over here where you can see there's like these little details in the uh, side of the head of the sculpture right here. You can see these little different changing colors and stuff. Where over here, it just looks kind of like grayed out and kind of weird and blurry on the G85. But when you zoom out, I actually kind of prefer the G85 photo just straight out of the camera. The G85 image overall on the right looks a little more saturated and a little higher contrast. So it looks like the G85 does a little more processing to the photo in camera. Let's zoom in and see like noise levels and shadows. They both look pretty similar in that regard. You can see how there's kind of like a warmer tone in the G85 image over here, but you get juicy bokeh balls in both of these photos, so no problems there. But overall, the G85 straight out of the camera looks to me a little more dynamic than the more conservative looking G9. So that may just be a personal preference. I kind of prefer the more dynamic out of the box look on the G85, but some people I could see preferring the G9's look of a more muted kind of more dynamic range version of the same photo. But overall, these look quite similar straight out of the camera. In this photo, again, the pictures look almost identical straight out of the camera. I'm noticing in the G9 image, it almost looks a little more reddish. Overall, it's just slightly different than the more warm looking G85 image. I'm noticing maybe a little more dynamic range going on in between the shadows over here going into the highlighted areas of this little piece where in the G85 it looks like there's not as much dynamic range and there's kind of like this almost weird looking almost greenish looking area of the color in the, this part of the head but zoomed all the way back the photos look quite similar. The G9 image taken at ISO 1600 is definitely a little bit sharper than the G85. You can tell like on the eyes over here, it's nice and sharp around the edges of the eye where the G85, it's sharp, but it's not quite as sharp as the G9. The red over here on the G85 looks definitely brighter than the G9 over here, which is more muted. And then there's this area right under here where the shadow exists in the G85, where this looks a little more saturated and not as natural as the shadow looks over here on the G9 image. So G9 image definitely slightly sharper, but not by a landslide. I mean, if you posted this photo as is onto Instagram or something, you probably won't notice a huge difference between these two images. Looking back and forth at these two images, I'm also kind of favoring the G9 image overall. It looks like the G9 just delivers more dynamic range than the G85. So I would say the winner in this case is the G9. Here's an example where the G9 image is just obviously a lot better right out of the box. Zoomed out all the way, you can tell the difference between these two photos. The G85 on the right, it looks like, you can see like in the shadows, it looks kind of like pixelated and weird. Like the noise going on over here and the shadows of this little plastic piece. There's just this weird like digital noise looking stuff and not super awesome at 1600 ISO. But over here on the G9 image, you can see the shadows are nice and shadowy. Is that scientific? That's not very scientific. But there's no kind of weird digital artifacting over here as there is in the G85 image over here. And although the color of this little plastic piece right here, it looks kind of weird and grayish and kind of like not super orangey, I kind of prefer the G9 image on the left over here because this area that looks very pixelated and weird and kind of oversaturated in the G85 image, on the G9, it just looks more natural and it looks like I'd be able to pull maybe a little bit of these oranges out in post. You can see the green is more muted over here in the G9 versus the kind of more saturated look on the G85. But again, I think I think the shadows look a little more natural here and the sharpness is like super on point for you know an ISO 1600 image not bad at all and when you zoom out I my eye just goes right to the G9 image again 
So definitely a win for the G9. But weirdly, I'm noticing, like, let's check out this really dark, shadowy area right here. On the G9, I don't really see a lot of detail right here, where the G85 actually picked up a little bit underneath. So that's kind of an interesting, weird detail. In these two JPEGs, just looking at them right off the bat, they look pretty similar to me again. I am noticing a little more shadow detail and a little bit more contrast in this like under eye area of the sculpture. It just looks more dramatic in terms of like the gradation from dark to light over here. Where in the G85 image, there's not as much separation of color. It's a little more contrasty and it just looks to me better and slightly sharp. Actually, I don't know. They both look pretty sharp. They're both really sharp. What can I say? G85 and G9 are both insanely sharp cameras. Let's zoom into the banana here. G85 actually looks a little bit sharper to me than the G9 image, but I'm noticing more variations in the yellows over here going into the almost orange and brown areas. So definitely more dynamic range going on in the G9. But when you zoom out, they look very, very similar again. The reds over here and the apples, you can see they're a little bit more muted in the G9 versus the more saturated, more contrasty G85. So again, that's just a personal preference. Like if I didn't want to do a whole lot of post-processing, I don't know, I would probably actually go for the G9 in most cases, just because I get more dynamic range and I like all the details. Let's check out the shadows here. They look kind of similar, but I'm, I notice at 3200 ISO in the G85, the shadows are getting kind of crunchy and, and again has that kind of weird digital grain looking stuff over here where the G9 image looks more natural in terms of like how the grain is negotiated by the sensor and the internal processor. So good job both cameras, especially the G9. Here's the skull that a lot of you have seen in my previous videos. The trend is definitely continuing here where the G9 off the bat looks slightly better than the G85, but really either camera will give you a nice image. But the G9 image over here, and this is taken at ISO 6400, the G9 image definitely looks less grainy, especially in these kind of shadowy, noisier areas of the frame. I mean, this is pretty impressive for ISO 6400, especially on a micro four thirds sensor. Out of the camera, this looks pretty fantastic to me over here with the G9, where on the G85, it looks good, but it definitely looks noticeably grainy, even without zooming in. Like you can tell in this area over here, the digital noise, the JPEG kind of artifacting compression, you notice that it's more visually apparent. I can see more dynamic range in these blue areas over here in the blurred out background where on the G85 blues over here, it's not as dynamic in terms of how many different shades of blue I see over here. But the G85 image still looks really good to me. It still looks really sharp. You can see how sharp these teeth are, for example. And, and the dynamic range, like if you didn't compare these two, if you didn't have both cameras in front of you and you just took the G85 image, that's a really good image, you know, for a JPEG at ISO 6400 on Micro Four Thirds. The G85 is still one of my favorite cameras and I use it all the time, love that camera. Actually, in this comparison, I would say the G9 looks a lot better than the G85. Just better details, it looks sharper. ISO 6400, it's, I mean, it's just, it looks amazing. This is the final image these awesome shoes I recently picked up. In this sample, I pushed the ISO all the way up to 10,000, which is kind of ridiculous. And I was amazed actually at how well the G85 performed. The G85 looks almost identical, if not, yeah, pretty much identical unless you zoom in to the G9. So ISO 10,000, you're really pushing the limits of the camera. This is a pretty low light situation right here. So let's zoom in to the shoe right here to see some of these little stitchings. They both look really fantastic. The G9 image looks a little bit darker to me with these brown areas, but you're, I'm seeing a little bit of noise going on. Actually, the G85 looks pretty fantastic for ISO 10,000. It's doing much better than I actually thought it would. But you can see in this kind of shadowy area right here, it's definitely a lot grainier in the G85 versus the G9. It looks more kind of naturally delicious over here. And again, you can see a better dynamic range with the G9 image. Like, let's look at the shoelace, for example. This kind of nice gradient from light to dark over here. There's less contrast in the G9 image, so you can probably even brighten that up a little bit in post, and it won't see too much of the noise, maybe. But in the G85 image, you're already seeing noise to start out with. So, again, this is the G85 and the G9's built-in JPEG compression. 
I'm not, I didn't expect too much from this test in terms of like a completely noiseless image. And I'm actually pretty astounded at 10,000 ISO, how well both of these cameras performed. And again, when you zoom out, they really look like the same exact image. I wouldn't be able to tell which camera produced a better image in this case if I was just doing like a quick glance. So overall, yes, the G9 is a definite better camera for stills. You can see that it's just it's just not as noisy as the G85 in all of these examples. It's not as contrasty, but you get a better dynamic range going on in the G9 for sure. The G9 has a 20 megapixel sensor versus the 16 megapixel sensor on the G85, and the G9 is touted as Panasonic's like kind of flagship photo camera. So if you're seeing these JPEGs and you're like, okay, which camera should I get based on their JPEG performance? I think it comes down to, it's like any other camera test. It comes down to your budget first and foremost. If you have about $1,200 to spare, I would definitely get the G9. And remember the G9 is a bigger and heftier camera. So it's not something I would necessarily recommend for vloggers or if you want a lighter and smaller setup or if you do a lot of traveling. The G85 is just a cute little camera and I it's so powerful for the amount that you pay for it. I mean, again, at only like, you know, about $800, that's kind of a steal for a camera that can do 4K video and produce JPEG images at ISO 10,000 that look this good. I mean, that's pretty amazing. But if you're gonna be printing large, if you need that 20 megapixel sensor, I would definitely recommend getting the G9 because you'll get more detail and less noise and grain, especially in like the shadowy areas. If you're, if you're shooting in a lot of low light situations or you need to bump the ISO, the G9 will definitely give you better results. So that's my kind of not so scientific review of the JPEG compression on the G9 versus the G85. It definitely looks like the G9 has a much upgraded processor when it comes to JPEG compression, but the G85, you know, does a really good job as well. So I give both of these cameras huge thumbs up, but let me know in the comments what you think. If you made any observations that I probably missed in this video, comment below. I love to hear what you guys say. Hit the like button if this video was helpful for you or if you found it mildly entertaining. Of course, subscribe to me if you're not already. Click that notification bell if you're feeling juicy. Support me on Patreon. I really appreciate everyone who supports me on there. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>